Alright, good evening everyone. This will be a standalone video from the bathroom series because we're going to be working on something that really I ain't seen at all on the internet of how to do. Um, which has been a little bit vexing, but don't worry. If you have, like the title suggests, a Grow Rapido T thermostatic mixer in front of you, and you're not really sure how it works and all the rest of it, fear not, sit back, and for the next 10 hours I will uh, be going through the uh, procedure to do open heart surgery on one, and uh, you know a few other things besides. What are they? Yeah, there are Allen keys. Oh, I'm a little bit out of breath because I had to uh, had to find something that we needed and it uh, wasn't readily available. I will get to that. We'll get to that. <coughs> Silicon grease, Allen keys. Here is the thermostatic mixer unit itself. Oh. So this is what you get when you just simply buy the unit. You get this box here, and it's all very fancy, and it comes with a, you know, special, special sacred magic grow cloth to uh, stop the plastic from uh, rubbing in the box. And you get this cover, and you can see how it's orientated A and B. These are ports A and B. I've got a couple of BSP elbows round into them because that's how I'm going to connect them up. And then you've got, you know, the inputs, and it tells you which side is which, hot on the left, cold on the right. And then you've got another output here, which they give you, well, they give you a few caps, depending, because you can modify this. The idea is you have one universal valve, and then Grow charges you the earth for the accessories that you need to make it do what you want to do. And they give you a couple of caps, because obviously you're not going to want three different outputs. They give you some of those there to, uh... You know, do up. Oh, anyway. And so what this is, this will purely control the output temperature of the water. It won't do anything else. Oh. Well, that's an 8 mm. Oh, that's a 6 mm Allen key. Oh, well. We tried. I'll have to get an 8 mm in a moment. And so, to get this to do what you want, you will need to buy separately and wait for years and years for it to arrive a trim set, what they call the trim set. And of course it's not all here because people have been fiddling with it without my uh, prior knowledge. Well, a little bit of prior knowledge. We came up here and had a look at it, and uh, obviously it's not all gone back in the box, has it? <sighs> no, it's just been left out. Wonderful. So this is your fascia, it's just a shiny bit of chrome and it's obviously got a plastic backing on it that interfaces with that valve and basically this is just a, you know, obviously it's so shiny you can see your face in it and all doodah, so wear white gloves or some kind of gloves when you touch that obviously and then you've got this stiffening plate behind it this is for sealing and whatnot, you've got your o-rings here and your different screws and whatnot, and the idea is that that those green ones there will then correspond to these similarly sized holes here, and they will just sort of pop on. And then this is fixed. You see how there's two portions here, and the idea is that those two holes here screw into there. Obviously, this will all be in the wall made in, and then you come in and you cut this plastic skirt off flush with the wall with a multi cutter and then you go ahead and make this in. But we're going to make it up a little bit beforehand because I don't fancy doing all this when it's in the wall. I'm going to uh, get ahead and do some of it. Not all of it. Obviously I'm not going to put all the shiny stuff on. But I'm going to get the gubbins working because I want to make sh absolutely sure of uh, where all the different valves have got to go before I start. Now You'll get this wonderful set of IKEA instructions when it arrives. And uh, they take a little bit of reading. You get a parts diagram so you can see roughly where it's all got to go. Um, 
no real, and also you get the specs and the measurements, which is nice. So you can check whether the uh, shower doors slam into the knobs or not. And uh, obviously you get the knobs in little packets here. They all do different things. I'm not sure why I've got two. I think these are the collars. Yeah, some sort of collar for it. Not 100% sure actually, but we'll get to that. Yeah, it is a collar, look. So if we look on the parts diagram, we've got this piece here. So this is like a bridging collar between there and there, and then your final bit goes on. Goes either in or over or on top of it somehow. Don't really care at this point. What we care about is this, is this assembly back here. We need to install this correctly for the valve to function. And this is the crux of the matter here, this 34 millimeter box spanner. I'm pretty sure an inch and a quarter one would do, but I don't have any of that. I have a um, a three quarter drive, um, you know, British Bristol made one and three eighths socket here. And uh, had the driver for it, there we go. And we're gonna stick something in here and just use that to turn it. This isn't the recommended way, you should have a grow, you should obviously have the professional grower tool. Um, <clears throat> but I tried to get hold of one of those and they're even more difficult to get hold of than the trim set. So I've got something that fits and that's what's going to work. And I would hazard a guess that this size also works on there if you could get it on. But you can't because it's not, you know, it's a socket, it's for a car, it's not for this. But anyway... So, if we read the writing here, it tells us very wisely to shut off the hot and cold water supplies. And, uh, you know, then it says to install it and, uh, you know, <laughs> and then turn the water back on, basically. But if we read the fine print here, we can get a little, a little bit of an um, insight. And now it's saying here, install race, part A on the diagram. We have these IKEA instructions here. Na, 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 na. Of course, there is no part A. Oh, yes, there is. Race. So this part they refer to as the race. And that goes in there, in the back one, that we need to undo. So we need to get an Allen key to undo this part here. So that's what I'll do next. Okay. Put those shit ones away, they'll be thrown in the bin. Okay, this is your 8mm Allen key. You come in there, we'll try. There we go, and undo that brass plug that sits there. And then we're going to assemble it how we discussed all the bits in there, as so. And I also grabbed some adjustables while I was gone to do up the different bits and bobs. I don't know if it's worth hanging on to these little grow doodars. I mean look at the machining involved. They've even you know turned that bit out. It's not just a flat bit with a hex in the end and then you've got this all threaded and turned. There's not a sharp edge on it. It's all being ground and carefully done. It's got a nice little o-ring in there. And here we go. Here are the three doodars that correspond to these three new guys in the race is what they refer to it is in the instructions install race part A this is part A this is the race and we can see these two pins correspond to I shine my torch in there I don't know if my head one works see how there's two little doodah well pin cutouts there and there those will have to correspond to those two now before we go any further, I'm going to pop a little bit of grease just in there. Not a lot, you don't want big blobs, you just want to wet these rings here ever so slightly just to help it along. It's more for me, this thing will probably go together just fine if you don't bother with it. But when you're burying it in the wall, in cement, you don't want any problems. You should use a silicone based grease and obviously make sure that all the parts are clean and tidy. All right. 
and that sits in there like so. Now, these two pieces are then made in. This is made into there. You see how it's got a big end. That goes in there because it's the same as that. And so what we'll do is we'll just dab a little bit of grease on there. Now the only thing I'm concerned about looking at this now is that we have to turn this other piece to make it in. But then we also index these pins on the plastic race. So we'll just see, we'll just watch ourselves with that because I don't like pins at the best of times. But when you've got to put them in and turn it forward, it just seems a little bit problematic to me. There we are, that slides in there almost as if it was made for it. And what we want to do, we'll just take our rag, wipe this down, make sure nothing goes in the shower valve itself. Gave it a wipe already, but. Don't want to take a chance. There we go. Lovely. Just start it by hand. You notice as I'm turning this, the plastic piece inside ain't moving. You don't want it to move because it's supposed to be indexed on those two pins I showed you earlier and pointed out to. And if obviously if it's moving, you haven't done the first step correctly, and you need to take this out and start again. Ah, and it is moving, so we've got to take it out and start again. That's annoying. Ah, you're going in there now. Let's start again. Alright. That's definitely in there. Brass bushing over the top. There we go. That's better. See, this is a little bit fiddly. I imagine this would be a lot more fiddly if it was mounted in a wall and you'll have to do everything horizontal. At least here when we've laid it on the floor. It's a little bit easier. Alright, that's going up hand tight at the moment. The middle piece is staying still no matter which way I turn it. That's good. So now we'll come in and just give it a little nip with the appropriately sized tool. Very gently. Brass is a soft material. It is not the lug nut on a uh, lorry wheel. It doesn't need to be stripped to death. You don't need an air compressor impact gun, just your own fair hand. You can break very expensive things with your own fair hands. You don't need a lot of tools to do it. All right, that is now in there as, ha as happily as I'm able to turn it. I'll give it a little jiggle just to check it. And that's in. Remember, it's not the tightness of the threads that's doing the work, it's the seal that the O-ring makes. So it's not more tighter is more better, it's putting it together correctly the way it's designed. Now this is the second part in our instructions, if we consult the sheet. Obviously you have to wade through all this IKEA bullshit, take the cover off, and take the screws off and all that. But then we go along. And here we go, step three, step four. So we've placed, that's the big brass bit that we've placed in there. And now in my hand is part B. And we're just greasing that up. And these threads correspond to a threaded portion. I'll show you carefully with this uh, high-tech filming equipment. On the inside here, just where that Allen key is, you can see there's a threaded portion inside there, and that's what the threads on the outside of part B correspond to. And then 
like I mentioned earlier, there were two pins. Well, there's two more pins. There's a little one on the left and a big one here on the right. See if I can point that out to you. And obviously there are two other pins. Well, there's two pin holes in there and two little pins here. You see the little one on the left and the big one on the right. And they have to line up. And that was what I was worried about earlier. I think we just play with this for a second. You back on my brain box here a sec. Yeah, you see that turns, so this can turn independently of this brass body. So that means it's fine, we're not going to have any shearing factors going on once we line the pins up correctly. So a little one on the left, big one on the right. In we go. Now obviously it's a bit unnerving because you can't see it. However, I have full confidence that it's fine. Well, there's nothing else I can do really. And I'll do this up hand tight as we can. Which isn't very tight. Fingertips covered in grease. And we will get our span off. Let's see if we can't come down onto those flats. Uh, 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 not quite. Oh wait, no, 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 no. It's these flats up here. What am I on about? I'm trying to get onto the flats we last did up. So that's not the right one. We might not even need a big spanner. I bought these up here. We might not even need them. No, they're a bit too big. Yeah, they're a little bit too big for what we want. We want something a bit more delicate, eh? Oh, I'm going crazy. There we go. And just nice and gently. Obviously a little tap spanner. A little box one would be alright. But it's not the end of the world doing it like this. The other one, I don't think I could have reached in there with a pair of adjustables and done it how I wanted to, that's why. We had to go through all the effort getting the socket like we did, but that's no problem. I'd rather do it right once than have to redo it because I buggered up a 500 pound piece of brass. Now obviously we won't be putting on, like I said earlier, the chrome plate and all that because it's not in the wall yet and the wall's not even tiled. But this right here is the exact nature of how the valve works. Like this is the innards of it. And then later on we'll be doing another video about the outside and that's where all these bits come into play here. All your different screws and all your different fittings. And look, they even give you some silicon grease in a little packet there. I collect silicon grease, you see. I've got loads of little sachets and stuff. And I haven't gone through my main tube of frog grease here. You know, once you have a hundred grams of the stuff, there's no point in doing the little sachets as well. Right, I'm just turning this gently. It doesn't really get tighter, it just starts off sort of semi-stiff and keeps going. And I imagine it will stop suddenly like the other one when it's at the end of the thread. And then at that point it should be compressing the o-ring that's in there. And that's how you get your watertight seal. And obviously when we switch this on and pressure test it, we'll have full control of the situation. So obviously if this does start to leak we do have, we can take remedial action and turn the water off. You don't want to piss about with this thing unless you have control. Right, that's started to go tight now. I'm going to give it a little bit tweak, but nothing drastic because of the nature of what I'm doing. It's an adjustable spanner. It's not the best fit, but it will get the job done. We'll give it a little turn. That should be all she needs. Again, it's not the threads, it's the o-ring. Now if we turn the spline, just with our fingers, if we can, oh, just about, we can feel that it's turning. In fact, we can turn it, as I said, 360 degrees, which is interesting. But that goes back to what I was saying earlier, that there'll be one position in that plastic shape, the snake that I showed you, that'll be just completely off and it won't go anywhere. And so now, in theory, you should be able to work out which two of these ports goes where, and what does what? So if we turn it, you note there's a flat portion on the side of this. 
that will be relevant later when we're putting the actual knobs on because this will be how you locate it because obviously I don't know if you've ever worked on a shower and you take the knob on or take the knob off a um, something like a bar mixer and it's just a straight set of splines it has no flat bit and then you put it back on the customer calls you up and says oh when it's meant to be cold it's really hot and vice versa that's because it's not located it doesn't know which, where it is inside Obviously it's not a very detailed explanation, but that's the uh, Jobsworth way of explaining it.